This video will explain the phases of grief as we understand them from the research literature. What is a bereavement? Bereavement can be defined as the loss of someone close to you and grief as the response to that loss. So within this context, grief can be considered a permanent state as there will always be some response to the loss. Our grief is likely to change form over time, but there will always be a reaction of some kind to losing someone we love. You may be familiar with a stage model that says we move through five stages of denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. This is a popular model in the media because it is comforting for people to think there is something you can move through in an ordered way, which helps contain the chaos of grief if we have five jobs to do, so to speak. However, it suggests that there is one right way to grieve and it also implies that there is a linear nature to bereavement. But we know that grief is more of a roller coaster experience with good days and bad days being really unpredictable. We think a more helpful way of understanding our grief is by conceptualizing it as acute or integrated. What is acute grief? The initial phase of grief is often called acute grief and usually begins shortly after the loss. However, in the case of cancer, it's not uncommon to feel grief even before our loved ones have died. Acute grief can involve a whole host of experiences that you may have never encountered before and you may feel vulnerable in a way that you have never felt before. It often involves feelings of intense separation distress in which there is a strong urge to be reconnected with your lost loved one. This can feel very overwhelming and all-encompassing. You may feel significant emotional pain, which at times may feel like physical pain in your body. There may be a multitude of physical reactions that you may never have felt before, for example, heart palpitations, butterflies in your stomach, frequent yawning, dizziness, fogginess, feelings of unreality. In this phase, you may have frequently distracting thoughts of your loved one and significant trouble focusing on the things that you would normally have been able to focus on. When we're grieving, our brain is less concerned with paying attention to or remembering day-to-day -day things. So you may find small tasks much more difficult than you did before. What is integrated grief? Integrated grief is the enduring residual form of grief in which the reality and meaning of the death are gradually understood and we're able to embark once again on pleasurable and satisfying relationships and activities. Integrated grief does not mean that we forget about our loved one, miss them any less or stop feeling sadness when we think of them. In integrated grief, we're able to find a way of staying connected to our loved one without their physical presence. And it feels easier to engage in other activities without grief constantly preoccupying our mind. However, there may be periods when acute grief re-emerges. This is common and it doesn't reflect a failure or a malfunction of the grieving process. This can occur around the time of significant events such as holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, another loss, or just a particularly stressful time in your life. A small proportion of people may experience prolonged grief, which is a lasting form of acute grief with complicating features that impede the restructuring process necessary for integrated grief. Grief is thought to be the natural process set in motion to help us adjust to loss. As with other natural healing processes, complications may occur that mean it's not completed as intended. Prolonged grief is very similar to acute grief, however it can go on for years without the intensity of the experience decreasing. If you feel you're experiencing prolonged grief, then more specialist support may be necessary. You can contact your GP and request treatment from a clinical psychologist with experience in complicated or prolonged grief.